Well, welcome to this week's video. Uh, we got some bits done which I wasn't anticipating doing. Varnished the ailerons. Uh, didn't get things done which I anticipated doing. The control tubes, but at least you see my basic method of building the ends of them. We'll finish those off in future video. Uh, but we've got a lot of little tiddly bits done. But work and play got in the way. But join me and see what we did. I excuse the, the, the scruffy workbench. Uh, right, I've been playing a little bit. I've just uh, just went for a, a, a little bit of a, a mess around to try and work out what the control rod would look like. And I don't want to be bending the piece of tube I've got. Uh, control tubes I've got. So I've used a piece of fuel tube. Uh, car. Uh, Kunifer uh, fuel tube and I've tapped the end to take the uh, eye ends for uh, the control rods and I've cut it to what I think is a reasonable length uh, put a bend in two inches in from the end there so it's got a slight bend in it that gives enough space there for a plain nut to act as a jam nut I've done the same for that end there and uh, I've yet to work out what uh, range of movement that will give uh, as far as differential and uh, max down to max up. Uh, it did give me an opportunity to see where the vertical is going to be. On the plan it sort of talks about it being next to the bell crank in the, you know, with the bell crank set up in the uh, aileron down position but I'm not going to be using it as a stop it wouldn't work as a stop if that bell crank went over far enough to actually meet up with it it would be an issue so uh, as far as I can tell it's just going to go straight down here with a little bit of clearance to the bell crank so that's a, that's my plan now I'll get get that cut and bonded in on both sides I just wanted to see what was going to happen in that respect for uh, for the sort of movement but it doesn't encroach anywhere so i know where it's going to go i'll get that sorted out so while i'm waiting to get the yeah we'll sort out the metal for the uh, inserts on the end of the control tube so i can make up the control tube i took the aileron back off i've uh, just put in the bits of balls so the same way as i did for the leading edge uh so it'll, it'll feather back for the covering just to make it look that little bit neater Nothing particularly spectacular there. Uh, so that's that bit going on. I've uh, bonded up the other aileron leading edge. So that's all ready to go. That's uh, taken off the bungees. It's uh, partially cured now. It's had uh, five hours or so of going. So I've just taken off the bungees which were holding the leading edge back. Just leaving it clamped, uh, give it a good chance to cure off and uh, sort itself out. Uh, it's amazing how much difference uh, putting this piece of plywood does to the torsional rigidity of the aileron. Well, it's not really surprising if you've got any engineering experience, but um, I did a little deflection test and with uh, one of these bags uh, on the corner of the aileron with it locked for the port aileron that was beforehand and then after I put the leading edge on and just temporarily put the, the aileron back in place and locked it uh, this reduced uh, the amount of movement the amount of twist for that given weight uh, by 60% found a slight discrepancy in the instructions the instructions say that the aileron movement is 22 to 25 degrees up and 8 to 20 degrees down i think i've quoted that in a previous uh video i thought that was a bit strange that's a big number differential so i, I was looking around because i thought that was wrong and, and i'm sure i saw it somewhere differently and sure enough on uh print two uh, the aileron is 22 to 25 degrees up 18 to 20 degrees down so 
just a slight typo there but worthwhile noting it uh, make sure you go from the plan eight degrees would be a huge amount of differential uh, and that's uh, not all you don't want to have that much you'd have quite reduced aileron uh, efficiency the vertical as drawn on the plan uh, to go by the bell crank has been fitted now it's uh, if I'd known exactly where things were going I wouldn't have cut the cutout as large as it sort of showed on the plan by a good chalk I'd have uh, as you can sort of see on that side the cutout actually goes past the uh, three quarter inch uh, vertical section so you could afford I think to make the slot in the spar web there three quarters of an inch to seven eighths of an inch shorter but it's not compromising the strength at all because well we've got that upright being glued into position so it's going to cover what the web is going to do so uh, no issues there uh, I've glued it in whilst I've got the bell crank in position with its pivot or the extended pivot going through that way everything is nicely in a line and there's no no sort of twisting format on those pivot blocks okay what I've done I've drilled the two holes uh, to take these little panel pins I've made up this lozenge or backer the holes have been drilled through I've used a half inch radius so this is approximately one inch wide the pins are going to locate it when the glue goes in so that will be glued up we'll then drill that out to the right size and then I've got a piece of quarter inch which will go across underneath the front there just to stiffen up that piece of uh, plywood so that when the piezostatic connectors are in there's nothing there to sort of shake or distort it too badly okay I've uh, bore down the centre here a larger hole to have a 1.6 millimeter uh, wall thickness for uh, rivets to hold this into the outer tube but I'll still bond it beforehand and I've bored down the centre of it for tapping for the eye end I'm just now going to part this off I'm parting it off slightly long so I can turn it down so parted off just cleaned up the end left it slightly long because uh, I'll bond it in and then I'll face this with the tube so put this uh, this in not locking the carriage at the moment I'm just going to turn by hand get things started now I've got the, uh, the tap started and I know it's dead straight I can release the chuck we'll get the carriage out of the way I can put my tap wrench in and we can start the turning process <clears throat> I just want to mark uh, three lines going down the, uh, the side of the tube so I've got the jaws up right there I'm just using the carriage to uh, drive this down so a nice straight line so this so we've got that one upright On. so that gives me three lines 
three lines equally spaced around there I can now measure down put a mark do the spacing eight millimeter on the next line mark eight millimeters on the next line mark and that'll give me my uh, edge distance for the insert uh, enough uh, clearance so that the rivets going through away from the threaded section and one in the middle and uh, so I'll then centre punch them and drill them on the pillar drill using a V block. Okay so all cleaned up at the ends here excess resin which uh, was on the outside has been taken off all the, all the degreased where we go these are the rivets which I'm using which are monometal rivets uh, pop style rivets so my first bit I'm going to do is going to take a little bit of the, uh, the resin and put this down into the hole uh, easier said than done in a way it doesn't like getting down there but in with a little bit of a twist and the reason for this is it stops moisture from uh, being between the two bits of metal the uh, the rivet and that so that helps to reduce corrosion and it also puts uh, makes the rivet that little bit uh, more secure uh, then just stick some resin on the rivet itself push it into the hole Oops. form the rivet do the same with the next one there's a little bit of uh, resin that's squeezed out the uh, or around the side of the head so which is all good pop that one I don't know why that mandrel doesn't want to come out typical next rivet rising all the way around so that into its hole So the reason for using monometal rivets is they've got a good high shear, shear strength type blind pop rivet. Uh, as this is a round bar and the bottom of the head of the rivet is flat, there's going to be a little gap uh, on each side. And the trick I was taught years and years ago was just to lightly tap on each side and that does two things that uh, curves the rivet so as it's it's seated on the top of the round bar uh, so it makes a, a nice fit so we're not going to get uh, anything hooked up on it but also you know should the rivet loosen it it won't want to rotate because it's it's saddled on the top of the uh, the tube so that's got that sort of double bonus one might say and then uh, all we do now is uh, we get a bit of the resin which i moved out of the way so i didn't hit it knock it off with the hammer and i put a bit of that down each mandrel hole okay, sort of squashed in there as much as I like so we now know we've got it right in and with a bit of tissue I'm just going to wipe 
around to get rid of this uh, the excess resin that we've got around here like that if the it's taking it out of the hole a bit too much I can always put a, a dab more in uh, which one that's that one there make it nice and filled and that just helps to stop moisture from being able to get in to the tube when it's in uh, in operation so now I'll leave that to cure and that's it really for this week I can't go much further but uh, I'll leave that to cure so I've got a nicely sort of set up there I've done the other one already and uh, I just I've just put the uh, the rod end in at the moment but that's that's curing off I put a castellated nut on there that's slightly uh, wider than a normal nut that's just uh, so I can sort of set up and when we put a normal nut on I've got adjustments in and out on the rod end but that's the sort of position or length I'd like it to be nominal position I'd like it to be well that's it for this week bit of a strange one didn't get as much completed as I'd like to have done but having said that work really did get in the way and I managed to get about uh, just under three hours of flying in so it put things to, to pay a little bit having to wait for things to dry up and work didn't coincide for me to finish the aileron control rods so next week I hopefully will have those finished and I'll explain about aileron differential what it's for and how we can control it a little bit on this aircraft so catch you next week bye now thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up you can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can remember Go fly and feel the sky.